um, this week to, just for the purposes of today. This is your preliminary hearing. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if there is a probable cause to bind your case over to the grand jury. It is not a time in which it will be determined that, or that you committed this or any offense that may be testified to beyond reasonable doubt. Ms. Ross again has informed you of your constitutional rights regarding this matter. There's one particular one I want to address with you, and that is your right to remain silent. You have the absolute right to remain silent, and nothing adverse will be taken against you should you choose to do that. However, if you do decide to testify or to say anything out loud, anything that you say can be used against you, not only in this hearing, but at any time while this charge is pending. I say that to direct you that if you have any questions or concerns about anything that is happening today, don't make any statements out loud. Direct them to your counsel. Either write them down or Ms. Ross will collect the counsel paper. Speak directly to her about it. Don't say anything out loud that could be used against you at a later time. With that being said, if counsel or the state has an offense, we'll introduce themselves to the record and the state may call this first witness. Good morning, Judge. I'm Pat Romano with the state. This is A-D-D-A-C-E. We will call Detective Priester for the defense. And before the state is sworn in, if counsel or the defense would introduce themselves to the record, please. Good morning, Judge. Shaquelle Ross. Shaquelle is S-H-E-Q-U-E-L. Ross for Dominique Williams. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you provided to the court today is the truth, the whole truth, so help me God? Yes. Please state and swear to the record. Katie Reister, K-A-T-I-E-R-I-E-S-T-E-R. Good morning, Detective Priester. Good morning. Could you tell the court how you are currently employed? By the City of Atlanta Police Department. And within the City of Atlanta Police Department, are you assigned to any specific unit? Special Victims Unit. Okay. And how long in total have you worked with the Atlanta Police Department? Thirteen and a half years. And how long have you been with the Special Victims Unit? It will be almost a year in March. Now, are you both certified? Yes. Okay. And on January 19th, late in the evening, into January 20th, early morning, were officers dispatched to the Opera Night Club for 1150 Crescent Avenue? Yes. Okay. And is that here in Fulton County? Yes. And can you tell the court why officers were dispatched to the Opera Night Club? They received an anonymous call from a woman that she saw a video on Facebook, that it was recorded on Facebook Live of an alleged apparent sexual assault happening on the dance floor at Club Opera. Okay. And when officers arrived at that location, the Opera Night Club, can you tell the court what they encountered? So they had an extra job officer there at Club Opera, and him and another investigator that was actually assigned to another extra job as Midtown Blue came to Club Opera, and they looked for a victim and could not find one. Okay. And was the club or Club Opera, was it crowded that evening? Yes. Okay. And you said they couldn't find the young lady who was on the Facebook Live reception folder? Correct. They canvassed the inside and outside in the parking lot and on the outside sidewalk and couldn't find anyone. And after they attempted to look at her and canvass the club as well as the surrounding area, can you tell the court what they did next? Then they raised for a general investigator, an investigator white, a general investigator, someone that works overnight as the investigator for the entire city of Atlanta. He was advised of the situation. And what happened after Investigator White got there and they, I guess, either completed or continued their investigation at the actual Night Club? Investigator White put a preservation letter into Facebook so that the video was preserved. Okay. Now, with the next day, Detective Priester spoke to the Atlanta Police Department concerning this sexual assault. 
So the next morning I come in, I came in at 8 a.m. and uh, Investigator White leaves at that time. So he um, usually gives us a briefing of what happened overnight, if anything applies to us. Um, he did advise us um, of an incident that happened at Club Opera and that he did do a preservation letter request for Facebook. Um, we um, started receiving calls about this immediately. Um, like I said, I started at 8 a.m. and the phone was ringing at like 8.05. So um, then we, zone five, uh, 2599, she's a, she was a, on desk duty that day, um, raised us on the radio and advised us that a possible victim was calling the zone five precinct since Club Opera is in zone five and advised her that um, we were trying to find her. So she advised me the phone number of this victim and I called her. Okay. And um, the victim that uh, me and you take the live video, uh, can you tell the court uh, what her uh, name is? It's Jasmine Morning. And then um, you said you, did, you got her phone number and you said to call her? Yes, I called her and um, mm -hmm. verified that it was her and she said that she was the one in the video. Um, she is married. Her her Facebook name is Jasmine Island, but officially her her name is Jasmine Warning. Okay. And her, her marriage name is Island. Yes. Okay. And uh, did Miss Morning Island uh, explain to you, um, I guess, where she was and uh, what happened? Um, the nightclub that she went to. Yeah, she said she um, went to the nightclub <coughs> club opera to celebrate her birthday. Um, and she was dancing, having a good time, um, when a gentleman, um, started dancing with her, um, and, um, bought her a drink, um, she had a couple sips of the drink, started feeling woozy, weak, um, at this time she was still on Facebook Live recording everything, um, and then she slumped over, um, she said all she can remember is waking up to someone giving her a bottle of water, um, a white female giving her a bottle of water, telling her to drink it and um, before she comes back in the club. Um, she complained of um, soreness to her anus. And when she was uh, complaining of the soreness of, of her anus, uh, did she explain to you how why her um, she advised that she believes um, the gentleman that she was dancing with um, put his fingers in her anus. Now, um, did she uh, tell you where she was at that moment in time that she was uh, talking to on the phone? Um, yes, I, I had asked her to come into headquarters to, to um, speak with me, and she was already in Nashville, Tennessee, on her way back home. On the way where? Back home. And where is home for her? Um, it is East St. Louis. And uh, did she say why she immediately um, decided she'd drive back home to East St. Louis? Um, she just, just said she wanted to get back home. She wanted to get away. And uh, did she tell you about any um, steps that she planned to take as soon as she arrived um, at home in East St. Louis? Yes, I advised her, um, if she could, to go to the nearest hospital as soon as she gets to her final destination to have a sexual assault kit completed. And um, during that conversation on the phone, uh, did you guys talk about anything else um, in reference to what occurred in the club? Um, that, <coughs> that was about it. And um, did she go to, um, to the nightclub alone? Yes, she originally went to the nightclub alone. Um, and then she is Facebook friends um, with another woman who she didn't know was in Atlanta at the time. She's also from East St. Louis. Um, her name is Jamie Jackson. Um, <coughs> she, they had made plans to meet at the club that, that day. And did you have a chance to speak with Ms. Jamie Jackson? Yes. And um, was Ms. Jamie Jackson or did Ms. Jamie Jackson? Yes. Okay. And did she, uh, during the conversation with Miss Jackson, um, did she tell you anything about what had occurred uh, between the defendant, Mr. Williams, and um, or what she observed between the defendant, Mr. Williams, and uh, Miss Island, uh, or Mr. Morning Island? 
Yes, yeah, um, she advised that she arrived at the nightclub late uh, at about 1 a.m. Um, mm -hmm. And she texted Miss Morning, where are you? And they were on the complete other side of the, of the club. So she walked over there and she observed um, a, a male standing behind Jasmine. And Jasmine was up and down as in her emotion. She was very emotional, she said. She, one minute she would be crying, the next minute she would be dancing, fine, um, nothing. And um, Ms. Jackson asked her, what, what's going on? What's, what's wrong with you? And at first she just thought she was intoxicated mm -hmm. and emotional. Um, <coughs> and she noticed the male behind her was uh, videoing her and kept watching a video of her. And um, he stated that when Ms. Jackson asked him who he was, he stated that I've known her for a long time. I came to the club with her. And Ms. Jackson was like, no, you didn't. And I, I came to the club with her. You don't know her. And she got in between, kind of got in between the um, male and Miss Morning. And um, he then walked away. Physically separated, though, yes. And um, had, after that, uh, speaking with those two witnesses, have you had an opportunity to watch the Facebook Live video? Yes. And um, is Miss uh, Iowa Morning uh, in the video? Yes. And is the defendant also Mr. Williams in the video? Yes. And is Miss Iowa Morning um, yelling for help in the video? Yes. She is verbalizing that she needed help. And from watching the video, um, does the club appear to be pretty loud? Yes. Okay. Now, did, you said you had received a lot of calls concerning this, this case, not only from Miss Island, uh, Miss Morning Island, yes, Morning Island, but um, from other people who called about this case. Um, did anyone call? Yes. Who? Um, can I just get her name? I want to get her name right. Uh, her name is Jasmine Brewer. Okay. Um, she stated that she used to date um, Mr. Williams uh, recently. She gave his name, his full name. Um, around his uh, age, um, and she knew that he was born in uh, April. Um, she didn't know the exact date that he was born. Um, and she gave a description of the vehicles that he drove and his address. And what was the address she gave him? She gave 2867 to Lake Circle. Okay. Now, after um, you know, speaking with uh, Ms. Jackson and then Yes. Okay. And excuse me, morning, And um, where? Um, I flew up to East St. Louis. Okay. And um, can you tell the court a little bit about, um, I guess, your meeting and interviewing um, the victim uh, in her hometown? Yes. Um, we went to a police department um, in her hometown and. She met us there, as, as well as uh, Ms. Jackson. I uh, did two separate interviews of them. And um, there, I, she, she again reiterated what she did that night, what, how the night went, what happened. And she um, conducted, a, conducted a photo lineup with her. I went up with um, ADA investigator Donna Kimbrell, and since she wasn't familiar with what the defendant looked like, she conducted the, the photo lineups. Okay. And um, did you, I guess, did you make construct the photo lineups? Yes. Can you tell the court, uh, I guess, a little bit about uh, the makeup or how you uh, constructed the photo lineups? Yes. Um, I obtained um, the defendant's picture from Virginia DDS, and then I sent it off to, um, I put in a request for a photo lineup and um, with five other similar um, black males. Okay. When you say similar um, black males, uh, how? 
similar features. Okay. And I'm going to take issues between hair, facial features, yes. skin tone. Yes. Okay. And um, when uh, investigator uh, Kimbrell, Donna Kimbrell, uh, yeah, did the photo lineup with uh, the victim, uh, did she uh, select him? Yes. And uh, who did she select? Um, she positively selected Mr. Dominique Williams. And during that uh, interview in uh, St. Louis with the victim, uh, did she indicate as to whether she had gotten a sexual assault kit as she had told her to do um, after um, you got the phone call? Yes, she did. Okay. And uh, where did she do that? Touche Regional. And um, was she also part of a sexual assault kit examined um, by a medical professional? Yes. I have not obtained them yet. <coughs> now, um, after um, visiting her in uh, St. Louis, um, did you have any other opportunity to uh, meet uh, with Smith morning after? After that, no, I did not. Okay. And then subsequent to this interview, when you uh, came back and Yes. And uh, who did you receive a call from? Uh, her name is Tata Sneed. Okay. And um, can you tell us what, why Ms. Sneed um, contacted uh, you and the Atlanta Police Department? Um, she responded actually herself to police headquarters. Um, and um, from there we met her and we took her into an interview room and spoke with her about why she responded there. Um, she had, she advised um, that in September of last year she went on uh, a date with the male that was seen in the video. Um, Who was the male that was seen in the video? Dominique Williams. Okay. Um, on this date, um, they went to a restaurant for some drinks. Um, she said she had two drinks of Grand Marnier. And um, in between that, the drinks, she went to the bathroom, she came back, um, she finished a drink, and she said when she stood up, when they were ready to go, she felt very weak and had to sit back down. Um, and she told the defendant that, I don't feel so good. And he said, well, since your car's, at, they met at his house and then took his car to the restaurant. And she, he said, since your car's at the house, why don't you just chill for a little bit until you feel good to drive. And um, his house, um, is that the address that you gave previously uh, off of Two Lake? Yes, she advised it was the same address. Okay. And after um, he had told her that she could come back to my house, uh, what did they do then? She agreed to. She said that she, they were having good conversation, so she um, went back to his house. Um, they sat on the couch. Um, she remembers having more good conversation. They were laughing. Um, and then all of a sudden, the next thing she remembers, she woke up in his bed. Um, she looked in the bathroom and saw him in the bathroom. And it appeared, she said it appeared like he was taking a condom off. And she, she heard the sound like a condom was coming off. Um, when she got up and went to go to the bathroom, she had a one-piece, um, outfit on. Mm -hmm. um, so when she took it off, she realized the um, private area of the outfit was actually ripped. And when you say private area, do you mean, not to be brass, but the, the crotch area or the yes. area where her vagina would be? Yes. Okay. Um, it was, it, she said it was ripped. And, and she, um, when she said ripped, can you explain to the core, was it like a hole or was it just a tear? It was, it was a big hole in there. Um, she brought the actual clothing with her. Um, she kept it. Okay, and after she realized there was a hole in her uh, jumpsuit, a large hole in her jumpsuit in her uh, uh, private or vaginal area, um, what did she tell you next? Um, she told me she looked at the defendant and said, what the fuck happened? And uh, he said, um, 
you were moaning like you like you liked it and she was like well what happened to my clothes and he said I was rubbing on you and it, and it ripped um, she said then she grabbed her belongings and left said she did not. And uh, I believe this is the last thing she remembered was having a conversation on the couch and then she blacked out. Yes. Okay. Um, did she describe to you um, when you were speaking to her how her vaginal area felt um, after she woke up and immediately left? Yes. She said it had been about a year since she had, uh, if I remember, about a year since she had sexual intercourse and she said it, it did feel like she there was sexual intercourse. And did she describe to you what she was feeling, or she did they, she felt like she had had sex and she had had sex in a year? Yeah. Okay. Um, did she tell you anything else um, after pertaining to your investigation? Um, she gave the same description of his vehicles, um, and um, I asked her why she didn't report it, and she said she just was wasn't ready to report it. There was no reason. And. Um, during that uh, interview with Ms. Sneed, um, did you do any sort of identification procedures with her? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, we also conducted a photo lineup okay. with her. And, um, Investigator Wiggins um, conducted the photo lineup because she also wasn't uh, familiar with, or I'm sorry, Investigator Epps did, because he wasn't um, familiar with what the suspect looked like. Okay. And uh, did you again, were you the one who constructed the actual photo lineup? Yes. And did you do it in the same manner that earlier to the court? Yes. Okay. And after uh, Investigator Epps uh, showed um, Ms. Sneed uh, the six uh, pass or six uh, photographs for the photo lineup, um, was she able to make an identification? Yes, she did. And um, who did she identify? Mr. Dominic Williams. And what did she identify Mr. Williams um, to have done? To have raped her. Now, uh, just to circle back quickly uh, to uh, Ms. Morning Island, uh, did she indicate that she had consented to uh, the defendant uh, putting his finger into her rectum or her anus? No, she did not. Okay. And um, do you see the defendant, uh, Mr. Williams, here in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. And if you could um, point us and identify him by an article of clothing. Um, he is wearing a blue short sleeve um, shirt with gray undershirt, long sleeve. And let the record reflect that two witnesses identified the defendant. Record shows so it reflects. <clears throat> and uh, the 28672 Lake Staples College Park address, the defendant's address, where uh, Ms. Sneed described how near she had been raped, uh, is that here in Fulton County? Um, it is in the city of South Fulton. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Chantal Roth. I represent Dominique Williams. I just kind of want to establish a timeline here. We'll go back through a couple of the questions. Um, we're going to do this like topic by topic so that way I can kind of understand um, and kind of break down where we're at with, with your testimony. Um, you, are the, you are the lead detective on this case, correct? Yes. Okay. So you're responsible for overseeing the entire investigation with the <coughs> Yes. And do you agree that your role in this case is to collect and preserve evidence and information? Yes. Okay. So that would also include like collecting videos as well, a part of that preservation as well, right? Yes. It would also involve collecting other info as it relates to this case as well, right? 
such as like witness statements, uh, <coughs> documents. Yes. Okay. Nothing. Nothing outside of what I'm asking you for. No. Um, so any of that. In, so a part of that info with, in regards to preservation that would also include witness testimony, finding witnesses, preserving their statements as well, right? Yes. Okay. And reviewing incident reports from responding officers and other officers. Correct. Okay. As well as investigators. Yes. So, would you also be in charge of reviewing 911 calls as well? We have the ability to do so, yes. Okay, thank you. And do you, you go through a procedure of securing that evidence properly? Yes. Okay. Do you also speak to other people who might have knowledge about the crime outside of witnesses? <coughs> Such as officers? Uh, such as people, who, let's say for an example, people who come to you, the people that you mentioned, you have, um, are you responsible for also asking other people questions that may have been at a scene or a potential crime scene? Yes. Okay. And some of those people could be on Facebook, correct? Witnesses? Yes. Okay. And some of those people could be employees at a facility or a location, correct? Yes. Okay. And some of those people could also be security? location or facility? Yes. Okay. And are you also in charge of collecting uh, DNA evidence as well? Um, we do only buccal swabs as an investigator. Okay. Are you in charge of collecting toxicology reports and drug lab reports as well? Yes. Okay. And are you in charge of afterwards going to the scene, taking uh, taking photographs of the scene, and um, going to the scene, maybe conduct further investigation of the scene and getting pictures and things? Yes. So, would some of those would some of those pictures include entrances and exits of the scene? Yes. Okay. And street locations, uh, the parameters of the scene as well. Yes, we have a crime scene unit that does that. Okay, but they turn over that information to you and what's the procedure after the crime scene does that? What does that procedure look like? Um, we have to request the photos okay. from the photo lab. Thank you. <coughs> so do you also obtain witness lists and present so let's say for an example, um, if the crime scene Um, well, since I came in at, you know, the next morning, um, there, there was nobody there anymore um, at, at Club Opera. I called and I emailed and they were already closed. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And you examined the scene to collect clues of the evidence, whatever they give you, you examine that? At a later date, yes. Okay, all right. And part of those clues and evidence can be looking at surveillance that would be at a location as well, then, right? Correct. And do you also reach out to hospitals to verify, um, to, to 
verify people who have arrived at the hospital, potential victims? Sometimes. Okay. And when you have a case that actually happens on Facebook, allegedly, do you contact the Facebook administrators to preserve the evidence? Um, yes, there's a, there's a proper procedure for that. Okay. You mentioned a second ago that you reached out. If you can just explain that, you said that you reached out to Facebook or you did something in that manner. How, what was that procedure? How did that go? There's a, you have to complete a preservation letter um, and you send that to a, a certain uh, website, uh, I'm sorry, an email address and, and they go from there. Got it. Mm -hmm. So do they get back with you as an approval or preserve it? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. And did you, or did any witnesses come forward outside of, I think the name that you mentioned was um, Ms. Jamie Jackson, Jacob? Yes. yes. Okay, and what were those witnesses' names? Um, Ms. Shartanya Brady. Okay. And what was Ms. Shartanya Bradley's involvement? It's Brady, B R A D D Y. Okay, thank you. Um, she was also there in the same vicinity dancing and she recorded um, the incident as well on her phone. Got it. And did you get a chance to talk to Ms. Bradley? Bradley, yeah. excuse me. Yes. And was that conversation on phone or in, at the station? How on phone. Okay. And what was what did Miss what did Miss Brady mention to you when you had that conversation with her? Um, she had mentioned that she thought that they were boyfriend and girlfriend. That's why she didn't intervene. Um, but. It, she was in the video, she had the video, and it showed the defendant carrying Miss Morning's body off of the dance floor. Got it, okay. So when you said she thought they were boyfriend and girlfriend, can you explain to me what that means? She just said that they were together, and she, it looked like they were just together. Okay, did she explain the distance that she was from Mr. Williams? Well, it shows in the video that they were in close proximity, a couple feet away. Okay, so when she came in, she actually brought the video in for you to see? She didn't come in. She, oh, excuse me. When, yeah. she, when you spoke to her on the phone, did she make reference to a video and you pulled it up at that moment? Yes. I don't know. Um, it used to be for an opera. Um, it has several, I don't know the square footage exactly, but it has several separate different rooms. So you've actually gone to the facility and you've seen inside there, Yes. Right? As part of your investigation? Yes. Okay. Did you, did you visit the full extent of the nightclub? Yes. And what is that full extent? Is that street? Is that inside? Is that doors? Can you explain that? Um, there's several different rooms that you can have different events in, um, but in this case in particular it was just on the dance floor that night. There was a performer on stage, which is towards the front of the nightclub. Okay. And how many rooms would you say are inside the club? I, I don't know. Um, maybe six. Maybe three downstairs, three upstairs. I, I'm just guessing. I, I well, well can't let me remember. ask you this. You, you did go as part of your investigation to review the, the inside and the perimeter of the club, right? Correct. Okay, and so. I wasn't focused on the other rooms as much, though. So okay. I just no, happened to notice how big it was. Got it. Okay. And how many rooms are upstairs compared to downstairs? I don't know exactly. Okay. Um, there's a patio in the back outside that is se separate from the inside. It's not inside, 
and then there is towards the front of the club there is a covered patio it is it's outside but it's also it's still covered got it so this patio is it is so is it facing crescent when you say back outside what does that mean can you please explain that um so if you're looking straight at the club it would be to the right if you're on the outside you went of the club looking at it yes okay. it would be to the right you have to go in in the club and then it's to the, the door immediately to the right okay and is it is it downstairs patio or is it upstairs patio it's downstairs downstairs mm -hmm. by the front or to the is it mirror to the right if you're looking at if you go in the club in the front entrance it's to the right It's not, it's not two levels, it's just one level. Okay, well the level that where it's, where, so it's street level, basically. No, it's not street, it's in the club, I guess on the second level, because well, the club is on the second level, you have to go upstairs to get into the club. Okay, and let me just clarify, just so there's no confusion. You can't, you can't enter that, that, that patio from the street, right? You have to be admitted into the club. Correct. Okay. I believe so. And what day was this when this alleged incident occurred? Um, it was January 19th going into the 20th. She was there on the 19th that night. Okay, and approximately what time did she get there? She got there at approximately 10.50 at night. 10.50? Yes. Two? So this alleged incident, did this happen while the performer was get performing? Was there music playing? Can you describe that to us? Yes, there was music playing. And what type of event was this? Um, it was a hip hop, I believe, concert. Uh, what type of artist? Um, no, I think that I think that's relevant. This is a lead detective who's testifying that she's gone to the scene. She has probably possibly spoken to the different people at the club. This establishes whether or not people in this area could have heard. So I'm trying to establish the, the timeline. I'm trying to establish if there was noise being played. I'm trying to establish certain things leading up to my argument. I think it, I think it's more than relevant if we're talking about a patio, we're talking about a club, we're talking about music. I think this goes to whether or not a crime could have possibly been committed. I'm going to sustain the objection. I think the jury would testify that there was a concert and it was loud. No problem, Judge. Thank you. Uh, how many security were at the I don't know exactly. Okay. Thank you. And how many bartenders were there? Um, there were two that I know of. For the whole night? Two that I, I know of. I don't know what time they started and ended. Did you get a chance to speak to those two? No, I have not yet. Okay. Do you plan on speaking with them? I was not. I don't know. <coughs> were, were police officers present at the club that night? There was one that I know about, yes. Okay. Did you get a chance to speak with him? I didn't speak with him myself, no. <coughs> were, there all, were there undercover officers present that night? Not that I know of. Male, female. Seemed like a younger crowd. Okay. When you say younger crowd, um, I would consider my mom young, you know, but she wouldn't. Right. So when you say young, what do you mean? Um, probably mid 20s to late 30s. And was there a fee to enter the actual club? I believe there was pre-sale tickets. Okay. And what capacity, excuse me, what capacity or, or I, what, 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 I think they call it occupancy, what,
what amount of capacity can actually be inside of the flow? I don't know. I don't know the exact number. But it wasn't a full dance floor. So this actual night, with, with this actual night in which this alleged incident occurred, was it a busy night? What would you consider busy? Well, I'm asking you, you're the lead detective, so I'm trying to get an idea if it's not a busy night compared to if it is. So after you've done your investigation. Like I said, the, the dance floor wasn't full. Okay. Uh, the dance floor, what about the other areas of the actual club? Um, I'm not aware okay. of if they were occupied. Okay. And do you know the artist who was performing? Uh, I believe his name is Mr. August. I saw that it was captured that the defendant was walking out of the patio with Miss Mooring. And when you say walking out, walking, walking out. Back onto the dance floor. Okay, so. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so. The video from Ms. Shartanya Brady shows the defendant carrying Ms. Morning to the side, which is where the patio is. Um, now the other part of the video that Ms. Morning had on Facebook Live shows that they went into the patio and it was quiet in there. No one else was in there. Um, and the video then reiterates her saying, no, stop, please don't do this to me. And then the surveillance camera shows them walking out a short time later. Okay, so I wanna make sure I understand this. There's three different videos that were, that were She on. has, so she has her Facebook Live video. When you say she? Miss um, Morning's victim, okay. yes, has her Facebook Live video. And then Miss Braddy's video, which is another viewpoint from her phone showing the defendant carrying her off the dance floor. And then the surveillance cameras showing them re-entering the dance floor from the patio. Okay, so from Ms. Ema's video, that video shows them dancing? It shows them dancing, okay. and then it's, um, she's moving, you see her hair, um, you don't see much of anything, just her moaning, saying no, and then they go, and into a separate room and it's silent. So you could clearly hear them. Okay. Um, he's saying, just sit down, just sit down. And she's saying, please don't do this to me, please stop. Okay, and then the it. video goes black. Got it, so with Ms. Ela's video, did you see anything else on that video outside of her being on Facebook? What else did you observe, excuse me, I'll back up. What else did you observe when you saw Ms. Ela's actual video? From her video? Yes, what else did I observe video. in yes. around the video? Mm -hmm. um, just that there were other people around, dancing around them. Got it. And, and how close proximity were those other people dancing around them? Like right against them, like right right next to them. Got it. So if this is uh, Miss Morning and this is Mr. Uh, let's say Mr. Williams and then Miss Morning, how far back would you say? Tell me where to stop. Right there. Right there, okay. Mm -hmm. is, there a, 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 is there a circular or a per perimeter around people? So does it go all the way around? Different people all the way around? Or is there just one or two people on this side? Um, it, there were just people everywhere. So <laughs> they were everywhere. Yeah, they okay. were just dancing okay. all fair. around them. Yeah. That's fair. Um, when 
and she's still on the dance floor. Okay, and what is happening at that time? Um, she's leaning forward, um, and the defendant is behind her, and she makes a noise, opens her mouth um, while making a noise, saying, no, 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 someone help me. Okay, and, and you said you spoke to Ms. Braddy. That's the other video that you had? Yes. Okay, and did Ms. Braddy say that any contact was going on at that moment? Um, she just said this, the defendant was, was holding her, um, she didn't, because the side angle that she was at doesn't show Mr., she wouldn't be able to see her anus. But you, you did obtain surveillance from the nightclub, right? Yes. So in reviewing those, those, those actual videos regarding where Elin's or Braddy stopped, did you get a chance to view any other cameras from a different angle? Um, not the surveillance didn't catch any, didn't, we couldn't see them uh, at, on the surveillance at any other time. Okay, no problem, thank you. Mm -hmm. did, were you able to make contact with any of the other people who were standing around outside of Ms. Braddy? Um, no. And where's Ms. Elaine uh, describing that this alleged assault occurred? Um, she sat on the dance floor, and then she doesn't remember after that. And when she said on the dance floor, what exactly is she saying occurred? Um, she said she, it felt like the suspect's fingers were in her anus. There is a point in the video where she <coughs> is looks like she's writhing in pain. Did you ever see Miss Elin um, dancing with him as well? Yes, in the beginning okay, of the video. And how was she dancing with Mr. Williams? Um, he was behind her and she was in front of him dancing. And you kind of bobbed a little bit. Like, well, like she had her back <coughs> against them, just dancing, and this, the defendant was kissing her neck. Okay, and, and did she say stop at that moment when her neck was dancing? At that moment, no. Okay, did she... Um, as she, as she, you, you did a bob, I want to go back to that. As she's bobbing, um, what is her demeanor and how is her statue um, towards Mr. Williams? Uh, she, it appeared she was leaning back. Okay, leaning back, like how? How you lean back, like against him. I, I don't know, there's even a song called Lean Back. There's different ways you can lean back. This is very crucial. So when you say lean back, do you mean her the bottom half of her, do you mean her, her upper half? I, that's okay, I'll, I'll just describe what I'm doing. Her shoulders are back, like leaning against the subject, the defendant. Got it, and about how long in the video have they been dancing together? Um, I wanna say a couple of minutes. Okay, and did she look like she was having a good time? Was she smiling? Yes, okay. she was. And so let's move on. She is 30 years old. 30, and you said she is married? Yes. Her, her married name is, is Elaine? Yes. Okay. Right. Does she have any children? Yes, she does. And how many? She has five children. Five. Is she pregnant currently? That's what she advised me, yes. Okay. Do you know how far along? Um, I can object to relevance, Your Honor. I think it is relevant. Um, we are talking about a young woman assaulted by a guy in the club. This goes to her character, who she is, and how she was in that club. I think it is relevant to show um, who she was and who she is in that club and what was going on at that time. I think, it, I think it's relevant. And she has now had a character of the victim that's not admissible in court. But it's just coming in church. No problem. And what, what, what have you learned that she was doing in the club the night she was there? What was she there for? <coughs> Um, she said she was just going to have a good time and dance, okay. celebrate her birthday. Got it. And what was she wearing that night? Um, she was wearing, a, I believe, a red dress. Okay. And when you say dress, that could be what, what type of dress? Short dress, a mini dress. Short, and when you say mini, what is that? Um, it appeared to go halfway down her thighs. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm going to step out when you say halfway. 
I went to private school. My, my drug tactic extends to my tip of my finger. So you mean here? Halfway down her thigh, not yours. Okay, so how about this? How tall is she? She's five. I believe she's 5'2 or 5'3. She's very short, and very small in stature. Got it. And do you know how tall the defendant is? He is 6'2, six, 6'4, six, I believe, between that. I don't know exactly. Okay. Yeah, let me see. And you saw her dancing on? He's 6'4. Okay, thank you. In the video, you said you saw her dancing. Did you see any part of her clothing at that moment in the actual video? Yes. What was it doing? Yes. Um, her clothing was actually coming off of her. And when you said her clothing was coming off of her, what does that mean? Um, her strap was coming down, exposing her breast. Okay, and did, at any moment did she pull her strap back up? Um, she couldn't. Her arms were dangling down. Okay, and with, with, the, with the extent of the video that you saw, at any moment did she pull her? Um, I, I believe at once, if I can recall, she did. I have to rewatch the video again. And did you see her dancing, grinding, or um, dry humping my client from the back? Um, I don't believe she was. I, I couldn't see that. Just from the angle, it, I just showed, saw her face. You showed her what? Just from the angle from her Facebook live feed, I could just see her face at that moment and him behind her. So I don't know what she was, how she was dancing with him. Okay. The second half of that video later on. So in any of those videos that you saw, Yes, they were physically touching. Okay, yes. and when she was touching him, what was she doing? They were dancing. And, and how was she touching him, is the question. Um, with her body, the back side of her body. Did you ever see her hands touching him at any point? I did not. No. Okay. And when did you say you made contact with Ms. Elan the first time? Um, it was the morning of the 20th, um, approximately 8, what time she called? Um, it, was, it was approximately 8, 8.30 that morning. And how did you, how did you come to understand that it was Ms. Elan or Ms. Morgan? Um, she called the Zone 5 precinct and the officer in the, that was assigned to that precinct that morning raised us on the radio. Got it. And you said she did not go to any hospitals in Atlanta? Correct. And you said when you made contact with her, she was already in Tennessee? Yes. And about how far is that drive from Atlanta to Tennessee? Um, it could be, uh, it's approximately an hour and a half, two hours. Got it, okay. And what type of sexual assault evidence has been collected on Ms. Ms. Elam? The sexual assault kit itself? What What is all in it? What, what type of, ev yeah, what type of, just, what type of ev evidence has to, um, what type of forensic sexual assault evidence has been conducted on her? Okay, they do a vaginal swab, they do an anal swab, they do a hair sample, um, they do her mouth swab, uh, buckle swab, um, uh, pubic hair, um, and they do a um, pelvic exam. So was all of this done on Ms. Elin? To my understanding, yes. Okay. And where is, where, who, where is the custody of this actual um, test right now? Where is it at? It is at the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. 
And how did it get there? Um, when I was in East St. Louis, I, um, the, an officer from Centerville Police Department went next door, because their department, their uh, precinct is literally right, right next door to Touche Regional. Okay. He retrieved the kit and held it for me, so when I got there, it was my, now my custody. Got it, and how, what did you do from there? Um, and then I carried it through the airport. Okay. I didn't leave my side. Um, and um, brought it back to police headquarters. Okay. Um, there it was logged in as evidence in a lockbox and then transported to the GBI. Again, had any type of toxicology report been done? Um, she did give a uh, seven tubes of blood and urine. Um, we have not received the report back on that yet. Is that also at GBI? Uh, no, it is not. It is currently at the Touche Regional. We did not. We did not have that to collect yet. Okay. And I just want to go back really quickly to the dance floor. How long, approximately, on the video to the show that they were dancing? Um, like I said, a couple of minutes. Um, he was wearing a blue long sleeve shirt with two white stripes um, that went horizontally on the mid uh, area of the, the arm, and then a winter cap. Okay, and what type of bottoms? Oh, he was wearing um, black Adidas white shirt with with white stripes down the sides, um, pants. Okay, and the cloth type of Adidas pant. Okay, so. Is this a jogging suit? A jogging suit? No. Okay. Were you able to identify what the pants looked like in the front? In the front? Um, I couldn't see the front. Okay. And, and how many times on the video do you actually see them actually dancing together? On her Facebook video? Just of all the videos that you've looked at. Um, it was just, I believe that that one time they encountered each other. It was, I can't estimate uh, past the amount on the uh, video itself. I'm sorry. Pro approximately 10 minutes at most. Photo for the whole night? That's, that's what I was told, yes, by the victim. That's what you were told, but did you look at any videos? The Facebook Live video. Okay. Chartania's video. And then I have the surveillance video, which shows them coming out of the, the side patio. Has Opera given you any videos to this point? Um, yes, I have surveillance okay. of how that. How many videos? Um, it's just from, there's a couple of cameras upstairs and then a couple downstairs that, that actually show her just coming out that one time with him. Got it. About how many hours of videos did you watch? Um, I didn't watch hours of videos. Okay. It wasn't hours. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and when when the video shows that my client is holding her up, what is his demeanor? What is his facial expression? I couldn't see his his face. No, not on the video. Does, to, to date, has anybody told you that my client assaulted Ms. Eden? Uh, Miss Eden? Miss Morning herself okay. has told me. Any of the witnesses standing around her, have, have they mentioned to you that my client assaulted Ms. Eden? No. genitals or any part of his lower lower half of his body? Um, no, but you do see on Chartania's video um, his hand, he's holding her with one, his right arm and then his hand goes to his mouth and then his hand disappears in the back. 
couldn't see what happened, where his hand went. But, but you, you couldn't see it at any point where his hand went? No. Okay. And his hand disappears. Got it. Okay. And let me, let me ask you a question, and I don't know if the judge might stop me, but let me know. I, I, I can't assume you know what twerking is. Do you know what, what twerking is? Yes. Okay. And what is that? This is this is this is definitely relevant. We're we're going to get into um, what she did while she was at the club. She mentioned that she only saw her with my client once or twice for ten minutes, and um, I think this is going to go to uh, what she did while she was there. She is alleging that something occurred to her. This is going to go to how she acted while she was there. Again, that's not the purpose of this hearing, okay. counsel. Thank you. Please No, I did not. Okay. And you said earlier that she left <coughs> left outside or exited. <coughs> where, where is this exit at? Sorry, I'll retract that. On a on her Facebook post, she did was live all night. Um, she was appeared to be dancing by herself. Okay. Got it. And I'm sorry, what was a new question? Oh, I said that on her Facebook Live, she did appear to be dancing by herself okay, in a couple of videos before the Facebook Live video okay. that we're talking about. So let me just get a time. <coughs> so she's dancing with Mr. Williams, right? Is that, is that We're right? talking about the Facebook Live video that yeah, with him in it. Yes. Okay. Yep, so she's dancing with Mr. Williams mm -hmm. on the Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And then at what point, you testified earlier that you saw them go out or come out of somewhere. When does that happen? Is that before or after the Facebook Live? <coughs> after. After. After? Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you see her in the video dancing by herself, do you see her with any panties on? She did not have panties on. And Mr. Mina, when she was dancing by herself, when you mentioned that this was after, how I'm sorry, did you ask me if I saw her without panties when she was dancing by herself? Well, I'll, I'll let you, yes, I'll, I'll rephrase my, my question. Um, <coughs> in the videos that you saw, did you, did you see her with panties on? In the Facebook Live video where she was with your client, her dress was coming off, like I said, her strap was coming off, exposing her breasts. The bottom of her dress was also coming up, exposing her vaginal area. Okay, so mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the video you could see her, her bare skin? Yes. Okay, got it. And at what point is this? That was in the video in question with your subject behind her. Got it, and when you said you did see a second ago, you saw her dancing by herself, um, when she's dancing? That was prior to what we're talking about when she's talk, dancing by herself. Okay. It was the beginning of the night when she was there by herself. She was Facebook Live. Did you ever see her on the stage dancing? Yes. Okay, and what was she doing on the stage? Counselor, I'm going to ask you to move on. Okay, sure. No problem. I don't have it in my possession, but I have a picture of it, the back of it. Okay. Are there any text messages in the phone in which she's mentioning to anybody else about this alleged incident? I haven't looked at text messages from her. Okay. And have there been any other communications with her and anyone else besides Jay Book, her friend, in which she mentioned that this incident occurred? Um, she did go on the internet um, and talk about the incident afterwards, yes. Got it. Did you get a chance to talk to any of those other people surrounding the incident that she spoke to on Facebook? Um, I spoke with J Jamie Jackson, uh -huh. and um, I spoke with Shartanya Brady. 
crowded. Anybody else? Um, no. Has anybody else come forward who wanted to appear? Um, I mean, we received numerous tips from yeah. about this from Crime Stoppers tips. Um, most anonymous. And let's move on to Mr. Williams' direct section. Um, what statements do you know at this point that he has given? Um, so after Miss, <coughs> I'm forgetting her name, I'm sorry. The ex-girlfriend, uh, Jasmine Brewer, after she called with a tip with his phone number, I immediately called that number. He answered, um, and I advised him who I was, Detective Reister with the Atlanta Police Special Victims Unit, and I was calling in regards to a video that went viral on Facebook, and um, I was advised that it was him in, in the video, and he said immediately, yeah, that's me, I wanna clear my name, she's smearing my name, talking about I raped her, um, and, I, and I asked him, can you come talk to me? And he said, yeah, um, what's the address? And I gave him the address to headquarters, um, and I said, what's your ETA? Um, and he said, about, about, I'm about 20 minutes away. Let me just ask you a question. When was this? That was at 13, 24 hours on January 21st. Um, and 15 minutes later, in, we agreed to have him come in, um, and then 15 minutes later, um, he called back and said that he was going to come with a lawyer instead, um, and I said, that's great, let's arrange a time, and he said, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we had agreed on 2 o'clock for the next day. Oh, excuse me, would tomorrow at 2 o'clock be? The 22nd, okay. January 22nd at 2 o'clock. <coughs> Um, and he didn't show up and was not answering my phone calls anymore. Okay. At what point did you make contact with my office? Um, you should know that. Okay. Um, Yes. Okay. And um, you advised that you wanted to meet with me. Uh, this is January 23rd to answer. Um, and you advised you wanted to meet with me. Um, I was off. Um, you asked, are you willing to come in on your off days? I said, no. And you said, um, we could meet on Sunday, January 27th, 2019. But a time was not scheduled. Um, you said you would get with your um, your assistants to advise of the calendar and what time you could come in, and I never heard back from you. Okay, so you received an email back, right? Um, that email was
Ares Reeves, A R I S R E E V E S. Sleepy. Sleepy. Okay. May I ask you're in you're in working attire. What are you doing? I'm a nurse. Nurse, and where are you a nurse at? In rehab care. Got it. Okay. And what type of uh, what type of degrees do you have? I have my bachelor's in science and nursing and also in so I'm sorry, my bachelor's in science and nursing with a minor in nutrition. Okay, and if you could just speak up just a little more. If you could actually move the mic for you, just Okay, can you hear me better now? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, and where were you where were you at the night of January nineteenth? At opera. Okay. And what time did you arrive? About eleven twenty. Eleven twenty PM? Uh-huh. Okay. And do you remember seeing my client, Mr. Williams? Uh-huh. And is Mr. Williams present in the courtroom today? Yeah. And where is he located? To the uh, to the left of you. Okay, if you could describe him. Um he's right there with glasses on and a T shirt and gray. Okay. Um, I want to say it was a little before 1 a.m. Okay. And what point did you see uh, Ms. Eland? At the same time I saw Mr. Williams. You saw them both together at the same time? Uh-huh. Okay. And how did, you make, how did your eyes make contact with them? I look towards diagonally towards them. I kind of make contact. I make contact with Ms. Eland first and then I... Look at Mr. Williams. And when you saw them, when you made contact with them, where were you at inside of the club? I was inside of the club on the dance floor. Okay, and where is the dance where is the dance floor at? When you walk in and walk up, is the dance floor right in front of you? And what's to the side of the dance floor? No, when you walk into the club, it's like a little hallway you can walk in towards to get into the dance area. And once you walk in the hallway, I think it's to the left, you can go inside of the dance area. Where at? Inside of the dance area. Okay. And about how long did you see Mr. Williams and Miss Elin together? About two to three hours together. Okay. And during that time that they were yet during that time that they were together, let's break this down. When you first saw them, how long were they together? About 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Was there any interruption in which when you did see them? Yes. Okay, and explain to the court what you mean. They were dancing with each other, and then there was a pause into the event, and the hostess, one of the hostess of the clubs had announced they were going to do a twerk contest for a hundred dollars, and so that's why Miss Elon got a little excited, and she wanted to go in to do the twerk contest, and Mr. Williams tried to stop her from going up there, explaining that, you know, she would expose herself to the world. She would end up being on a world star, and she jerked away and pulled away from him and ran up on stage. Okay. And at that time when Mr. when um Miss Elin jerks away, um what when you say jerk away, what exactly do you mean? Like she he had her arm and she pulled her arm away from him and went about her business. Did it look like she was in any distress? No. Uh what were her facial features and her facial reactions at this moment? <laughs> at the moment of when she was Going on stage, she mm -hmm. she was you know turn up, and go in there and go twerk and all that you know she was okay having a good time. And um, then you saw after she dances, uh -huh. you see her again uh -huh. make contact with my client. Yes. And what was that contact? They were still dancing. Okay. And partying with each other. Got it. And do you ever see them exit a room and go outside of a room? No. Do you ever see my client assault Miss Miss Elin on the dance floor? No. Do you ever see um, my client's fingers go anywhere in regards to Miss Elin's body? As far as like when they were dancing, you know, touching on her side. As far as that, but other than that, no. Okay. And what did my client actually have on that day? He had, I believe, it was an all black sweatsuit. Okay. Did you ever see any openings in his sweatsuit? No. Did you ever see any part of his lower half of his body, any skin? No. And did you ever see, when, at, at the moment where she is bent over, do you ever see, um, uh, excuse me, I'll, let me retract that, I, I'll rephrase it. 
while you're standing next to her, does she ever mention to you anything has happened to her? No. Does she ever mention anything has happened to her um, before or after she dances? No. Um, to this day, has she reached out to you and said something has happened or has not happened? No. Okay. Did you know Mr. Williams before this actual incident, alleged incident, incident that happened at the club? No. Okay. Are you being promised anything to come forward? No. Have you been offered anything no. for your testimony? No. And did you know Mr. Williams before this incident? No. Okay. And when you guys were actually at Opera Night Club, who, who were you with that you were standing next to when you were, tell me, tell me that circle in which you guys were in. How did you find them and what was going on within that circle? I was in there. Yes. Okay. I, I want to know. I, I'm trying to understand when you saw Mr. Elin, excuse me, when you saw Mr. Williams and Ms. Elin, how many people were around you guys? It was crowded. It was a bunch of people. Okay. And why was it crowded this night? It was a concert and it was a weekend. And uh, yeah. Did you see security there? Yes. Did, was security, where was security located at the club? Pretty much at every corner. And how do you know that they were secure? They had them all black. Okay, and um, did you see off-duty police officers? No. Okay, did you see maybe the owner of Opera walking around? <coughs> no. Okay. Um, during this time that you were around Miss Eaglin and Mr. Uh, Williams, did she ever, did you ever see her alert anybody else no. that something occurred? Did you ever see her alert anybody else on the stage that something occurred? No. At any point did, or excuse me, was she around my client the whole time? Yes. It's not the whole time. Not when the performer was performing, she wasn't around him. But then after that. So she left from my client at a certain point? Mm -hmm. Did you ever see her whispering in anybody ear in anybody's ear that has happened? No. Anything that, that anything had occurred? No. Did you ever see anybody <coughs> coming back to Mr. Williams mentioning that something had occurred? No. Did you ever see um, her in distress or crying? No. Did you ever see, did she make any outcries to you guys at the club and those around her? No. Okay. Did she ever make, did she ever make any comments to you that anything occurred? No. No problem. And Miss, Miss Reed, tell me in your words why you, why you want to come forward. Objections are relevant. That is relevant. This is someone who was at the club who has first-hand knowledge, who was there, who was there during the dances, who can attest to why, who can attest to the facts and also why she's doing what she's doing. Mr. Williams is charged with aggravated sodomy, and I think this goes to, um, th this is very important. This is, this is relevant as to it relates to this girl, excuse me, Ms. Reed being there and... Oh, you can respond. What was the question? The question is, in your words, please explain why you want to come forward. Uh, I want to come forward because I've seen everything that was going on and I didn't want to have somebody be slandered or what was going on because this is a very serious accusation, especially in the time that's going on now. And in my opinion, that the situation was brought out of proportion because of social media. And so I felt like somebody <laughs> that was actually there should speak out as to what was going on and what was happening between the actions of both. Mr. Williams and Ms. Allen. Got it. And to this day, has anybody from the police department or the detectives made contact with you to get a statement from you? No. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Um, Reed, have you attempted to contact the police about this incident at all? No. No? Okay. And you said you didn't know the defendant, correct? No. And you didn't know the victim that night, correct? No. And uh, you didn't come to the club with either one of them, correct? Nope. But you had eyes on them the entire night? I didn't have eyes on them the entire night. I had eyes on them towards the end of the night. Towards the end of the night? Yes. So, but you said for two or at least two or three hours. Yeah, we were there. I was there. I got there around 11.20. I seen them. I stayed there. I seen them a little before one. We left at about 3.20. So, that's towards the end of the night. So, from 11.20 to what? One, you're saying you had eyes on the defendant at 
No, I said after a little before one, I had eyes on the victim and Miss Ewan. So give me the total time that you were watching the defendant and the victim that you said. I wasn't necessarily watching the defendant and the victim. We were all having a good time together. We were all partying together. So, you know, she said, hey, it's my birthday, turn up. And then my cousin, he was a little intoxicated. So we were all enjoying the night with each other. Okay. Well, during the time that you were either enjoying the night, watching them, um, however you want to, uh, I guess, define it, did you have eyes on the defendant's hands the entire time that you were watching them? No, I didn't have eyes on his hands the entire time. Then you didn't have eyes on his fingers the entire time, correct? No. So while uh, the defendant and the victim were dancing uh, very closely, you have no idea where his fingers were, correct? Correct. Objection. She already mentioned that she was in close proximity, and I testified to that. If she was around them, other people were around them. Uh, she she has already mentioned that earlier. So as far as the, I think that's getting outside of the scope because she has already mentioned that she was there. She already mentioned that she was around him, and she already mentioned her presence around him at that time. I would say. Not the entire time, I wasn't focused on his hand. Okay. And so if the defendant uh, placed his fingers inside of uh, the victim's anus, you have no idea if that was happening because you weren't focused on her hand, correct? Correct. No question. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Did you ever see any encounter with sexual assault during that time? No. Okay. Um, also, when you say they, it seemed like they were having a good time, what were her facial expressions during that time? She was smiling. She was laughing. She was smirking. You know. Okay. And how was she? How was she smirking, laughing, and dancing? What was she doing? I mean, I can't really make a face like her, but she no. was like, you know, smiling. She's twerking. She's laughing. She's dancing. She's, you know, joking with other people around her. She's, you know. She's and back and forth between she's having a good time, she's looking seductive, she's doing different things. And what is she doing with her body? She's moving her body. She, her body is mainly up against Mr. Williams and you know her lower end is on him. On and him? Is her back arched back out? Yes. Okay, is she touching him at any point? Yes. Okay, is she on the phone at any point? Yes. Okay, and what is she doing? Scrolling. Okay, and is she talking to people on this phone? Not that I can see, it just looked like she was scrolling from when I could see her. Okay, did it look like she was enjoying herself? Yes. Okay, no further questions. Three months. Just a question. Um, the uh, victim that I had a dress on, correct? Correct. And defense counsel just, uh, I guess, demonstrated arching her back. Correct. Her uh, butt, her butt to be pushed out, correct? Correct. And so the defendant had ample opportunity to put his hand underneath her dress into her uh, ankle, correct? From what I can remember, I believe the defendant had a drink in his hand and he was dancing. So if it was quick, it would have to be in a split second. And you agree, he has two hands, correct? Yeah, I'm saying, but like, you know, when you, you have a drink in your hand and you party it with the other hand, so I mean. So you agree you can party with your other hand down below underneath someone's Objection, dress, correct? objection, objection. He's asking her to speculate as to what someone can do with a drink in your hand and what someone okay, can do. Okay, speculation is legal. Objection. Speculation is legal. Response. How are the What about the question? Any further questions? No. All right. May Ms. Reese step down? No further questions. Thank you. 
was that she had on a one piece and that she woke up the next day and she felt hurt. She had just come from dancing. Who knows what she was doing at that, at, at, at that club or that, that dance floor. That doesn't mean just because she gets home with, my, my, with, with the defendant, all, he was the one that said, sit down, let me help you, let me aid you. Her car was parked at his house. Then when they get inside, the testimony that the detective mentioned is that uh, he, she hears condom noises. What is a condom noise? What is that? Is that, is that like saying plastic rubbing together? Is he in a bathroom? Is he in a cap cabinet? She does not say she saw a condom. He took the condom off. She can't even testify as to whether that penis went inside of her or was forced inside of her. That wasn't the testimony from the, from the detective. So in regard to that charge, I would ask you, to not find probable cause on, on the rape charge. Now, as it relates to Ms. Eden and the actual aggravated sodomy, um, the issue is whether or not Ms. Eden was incapacitated and something was being done against her will. That's what we're here for. Aggravated so sodomy is a person commits the offense of aggravated sodomy when he or she performs or submits to a sexual act involving the sexual organs of one person against the mouth or anus of another against their will. What's the sexual act involving the sex organs with the mouth or the anus? <coughs> with force, there's no testimony that there was force or that there was a restraint, that he overpowered her. The only testimony is that he's six foot four and she's five foot, I think five foot two. The only testimony is that he's holding her over. The detective said that she was the lead detective on the scene, but has not reviewed all the evidence. The detective mentioned that she only saw them dancing together 10 minutes, but the warrant that she gave to my, the warrant that she gave to my client was a warrant in the time span of 11, excuse me, 12.01 to 3 a.m. So there's surveillance, this is opera, this is a busy day, this is August Alcina, everybody's performing. There's enhanced security, there's bodyguards, there's police officers, even more security that comes with a, a well-known national rapper performing. Okay, so all of a sudden, this is on a dance floor, this is being taken place on a dance floor. The force that, that the force, as you know, Judge, the, the, the law says slight force, it could be any type of force. There's no testimony that says that she was being forced to do something against her will or that she didn't like it. The testimony from Miss um, Miss Louise Reeves was that her facial expression, she was turned up. She was having a good time. She was like, wow, partying. There was other testimony that said she was back, she was grinding. Even the detective said that she, she looked like she was having a good time while she was dancing. And then on top of that, Miss 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 Reeves says that she goes onto the dance floor and she dances more. But this is the same lady who just said she was sexually assaulted. This is the same lady that's inside of a club where police officers, security guards, people, this is a two floor, two, 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 excuse me, two floor type of event. There's security everywhere. So if they would have gone off to this room, the room still is, has people outside on a patio. There's people waiting to get inside. This is August Alcina, Judge. I don't know if you know rappers, but this is August Alcina. So there's people here waiting. You do? Okay, okay. You have his last album? <laughs> but but I'm but I'm, I'm I'm being I'm being this is a national well-known artist. This is not saying you're a local person. So there's enhanced security. There's testimony that was said that there are people around her. The detective even mentioned Miss Miss Braddy's Miss Braddy, which is Jasmine Elan's friend, was standing around her. There was no testimony that said that Miss Elan. Um, looked like she was in distress, that she she felt like she was in distress. This is her friend. I have friends. People know my facial reactions, my facial expressions. They know something's wrong with me. I don't even have to open my mouth and people know something's wrong. There was no energy given off of that. There was no testimony saying that something happened when no one was looking and, and it, it just didn't occur. It just did not happen. There's, I, I actually have offer here on subpoena because there's over 220 video cameras. The detective said 10 minutes. That is not true. That is not true. She only said she looked at three cameras. Elin's, where she's like, help me, help me, but she can't even testify as to what he was doing behind her. Then you have the next video that she says, which is Miss Braddy's. Miss Braddy's is 
from a different view where Miss, Mr. Mr. William is carrying her off. It doesn't say that he, she was, he was carrying her off to do anything to her. He's six four. He's holding her. That doesn't mean he's 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 doing something to her. He's holding her. He's six four. She's falling over. And in the Facebook live, she's saying, "Help me," that the detective said. But there's people around her. Why not turn and say, "Hey, help me. Hey, help me." She's on live the whole time with all these people around her, but never ask for help from anybody around her. Then I guess they 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 go to this area. And there's still people there. She comes back from that area to have a good time, to have fun. But you were just sexually assaulted. There's police officers and security at every door. So I would be asking that you find that there's no probable cause that there was force of this actual alleged event that occurred because the testimony shows she was having a good time. She was, she was engaging. She then went on stage and twerked. I don't know if we, we couldn't get into that, but Miss Reeves didn't mention that briefly, that she got on stage and twerked. The detective even said that she had no panties. In a club, no panties on. The detective just said she's a married woman with five kids. Dancing in a club with no panties? But dancing from behind? Just got assaulted? The same anus that just got assaulted is now on the stage popping and dancing during a court twerk contest. One, one round one. But then afterwards, drives past all the Atlanta hospitals. The detective said that she talked to her and she was in Tennessee. I, I've driven to Tennessee from, from Atlanta to Tennessee. You're gonna pass up Emory. You're gonna pass up security guards. You're gonna pass up police officers. You're gonna pass up several people in which would have gave her the opportunity to even say something. She didn't even say anything to anybody. There's been no te testimony about anybody else, but there are all these witnesses that literally can say that this did not happen. And number two, when she got to the actual hospital in St. Louis and she talked to um, Detective Reister, she told her to get a test. But my question is, why didn't you get the test done in Atlanta? She went live. Why not go live and say, I'm going to get a test done? This assault didn't occur. It just didn't occur. There's too many people around for you not to have the, the ample opportunity to raise attention to somebody somewhere. And then, and then in one of the videos, one of the, the either it was detective or uh, Ms. Reeves testified that my client wasn't even with her the whole time. So that means at some point she left from with him, went somewhere, and she could have alerted that person. She did it. After that, she then went back and danced with him again after having just been assaulted. I, find, I ask that you find that there was no probable cause of a force or an, or a force that, a, excuse me, I, find that I, I ask that you find that there was no probable cause and anything that did happen was consensual because she was fully engaged, she liked it, she was fully aware, and her, set, her, her appearances were as though she was, she was enjoying the moment. We've heard testimony that says she enjoyed every, the moment and the dance and everything after that. And I, find, I ask that you find that there was no probable cause as it relates to the aggravated sodomy and the rape. Received testimony from the state's witness that alleged that on or about January 19th and the January 20th of 2019 at a location on Crescent Avenue in Fulton County. The victim alleges that the defendant, without her consent, committed an act of aggravated sodomy by inserting his. Without her consent. 
to be performed. The testimony from the Secretary of Police was that at some point early in the interaction between the victim and the defendant, the defendant allegedly bought her a drink for drinks, and at some point following that, the defendant fell ill or dizzy or woozy, I think was the testimony, the word used, and slumped over and woke up to a female feeding her a bottle of water. In terms of probable cause, the court does find probable cause to buy over one count of aggravated sodomy to the grand jury based on the evidence as presented today. There was separate testimony regarding an alleged incident occurring at the defendant's residence on about, or during the month of September 2018, the defendant's residence also being within the Fulton County, involving Ms. Snead, in which it's alleged that after meeting at a restaurant for drinks, Ms. Snead and the defendant returned to his residence where she is alleged to have made the statement that she felt weak and had to sit down while at the defendant's residence. The next, according to the testimony from the detective, the next day she, apparently the reporter allegedly reported that she woke up in bed. It was the detective's testimony that Ms. Snead's outfit had a tearing crotch area and that statements allegedly made by the defendant to Ms. Snead was that he was rubbing her or something, or there was some contact in which her clothing was torn during that time. Ms. Snead testified that, or I'm sorry, the detective testified that Ms. Snead indicated that at no time did she consent to any sexual contact, that she had not allegedly been involved or had sex within a year, and that it was her representation that she believed that a sexual act occurred with the defendant, that sexual intercourse occurred with the defendant, and allegedly there were statements later in which the defendant allegedly stated that he thought that she was enjoying it. Again, the testimony from Detective Reister upon that interview, based on the interview with that alleged victim, was that there was no consent to any sexual activity of the defendant in front of the victim in that alleged incident, also reported having drinks and at some later time feeling woozy, dizzy, and apparently passing out. Again, based upon the testimony of the state's witness regarding that incident that occurred in September 18, well, allegedly occurred in September 2018, the court also finds probable cause to drive over one count of rape. It is the court's decision that is there anything further on the state? Nothing further on the state. Judge, if I'd like to address some preliminary matters that I actually, just really quickly, I actually think that the offer of sexual intercourse was consensual. I think that the defendant and the victim had consensual sex. I think that the victim was consensual. I think that the victim was consensual. I think that the victim was consensual. And I just want to make mention of some things on the record. I can do that. It doesn't have to be you guys can move on. I can do that up with the stenographer. Just some things. He brought me some things. I just want to make sure that is mentioned on the record. Is it relevant to this probable cause hearing? No. So that's why I said I can do it later or I can come up however your Honor would like me to do that. Because he's under subpoena. Okay. If it's not relevant to the hearing, I don't know that it needs to be on the record. State position. I don't think it needs to be on the record. Okay. If there are matters that we need to take up outside the presence or off the record, we'll certainly do that in terms of 
shout out to Georgia Salon Fans. Either we're exiting or having a seat. Either we're exiting or having a seat.